This is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to put together a very, very basic uh, program using the STL graphics library. So, uh, firstly, let's, let's take a look at what STL actually is. So, I'll go to a browser here. Uh, what we need for this program is we need um, a, basically a, a games programming library that at least lets us do um, graphics programming and in particular gives us pixel level access. So if you search for C++ game library there are various options that are, that are going to come up. There's, um, there's a whole list of them here, a list of game engines. Allegro is a good one um, but th there are lots of them. I'm going to use one called SDL so you can follow these tutorials using any games uh, library basically that lets you do pixel level access on the screen. You need to be able to manipulate individual pixels. And although I'm going to show you this example using SDL, uh, using SDL2, if you're using some other version of SDL or you want to use a different library, I'm going to try to give you the right kind of pointers that you could do that for yourself with some Googling. And uh, I should just mention that uh, learning to use Google effectively is, is, is a really, really, really great skill to have as a programmer. I use it constantly to look for example code and to look for any information I need. And uh, if, if, you're, if you dive into Google um, very, um, very readily, then it will help you a lot with your programming. So I'm going to use this SDL, which stands for Simple Direct Media Layer. And uh, this is a very kind of basic uh, C++ games programming library. It doesn't provide you with any 3D facilities or anything that I know of. Um, I, 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 can, I can mention actually you could also use probably OpenG, OpenGL to follow this tutorial. I think that gives you pixel level access but that's another good library to use. SDL doesn't give you 3D facilities or anything but I like it because it's been stable for a long time and it's reliable and I've had quite few problems compiling this for every different platform that I've worked with. Well, that's basically, um, yeah, Mac, Linux and Windows. I, I had no trouble, no significant trouble getting SDL to work on any of those. And I have to say that getting trouble, having trouble getting APIs to work, particularly game APIs, uh, that's application programming interface, uh, by which I mean basically libraries, is a common experience. It's not always easy to get them to work, but SDL is uh, it's one of the easier ones to work with. So I'm going to use SDL2 for this tutorial. Now, what we need here are we need the header files, we need static libraries to link our program with. And SDL also uses dynamic libraries, which the static libraries refer to. So we also need um, a dynamic library which would have to be distributed with our program. It's possible, apparently, to statically link an SDL program so that you're not using any dynamic libraries at all. You've just got one file to distribute. But then, uh, by the license terms, you're obligated to distribute your source code as well. Uh, so <laughs> that's not really that convenient. So either way, you, you can't just distribute one single file. You've got to distribute um, at least the DLL um, or the, um, the .so or whatever with it. But anyway, that's, that's not too bad. And uh, this is a common situation with C++ programs, which is why, uh, unfortunately, installers are often necessary to distribute programs. But, um, but for this program that we're developing, you only have to distribute two files, so it's, it's not too bad, your program plus the dynamic library. So what we need is the header files, the dynamic library to link with, and the, uh, sorry, the static library to link with, and the dynamic library that the static library actually refers to. So that's three things that we need, basically, here. Now, if, if you go to the SDL2 uh, downloads page, uh, we've got downloads for Windows here, 32-bit and 64-bit. And we've also got, actually these are just the runtime binaries, so we're going to need actual stuff to develop with. These, these are just the files to run your program. So if we look at development, development libraries, we've got, we've got one for Visual C++ for Windows. We've got one for GNU for Windows, for MinGW here. And um, 
Now we've got this DMG package for Mac and Mac has its kind of own system of packaging programs involving something called frameworks, which I don't fully understand. And I, although in theory we should be able to, on a Mac, we should be able to create, use the SDL framework, I couldn't get that to work. Um, and a lot of other people as well are saying that at the moment their program just crashes if they try to use this framework. So what I've done is I've, I've used the kind of Linux version of STL to compile this program uh, because Mac is a Unix based system so we can use the Linux, the Linux version of STL to compile programs which I didn't have too many problems getting working. Uh, so you need to download the right file for your, uh, for your platform. So if you're using Windows, either vi the Visual C++ version or MinGW version, uh, there's, I don't think there's really any other choice for actual compilers for Windows. So even if you're using code blocks, you're probably using the MinGW compiler. So hopefully either of those will do the trick. If, if not, if you're, if you're using some other wacky compiler um, or one that's just not used much, you could use a different library to follow this tutorial. You just have to Google for some examples on how to do pixel access, um, pixel, yeah, access. Um, but hopefully you could figure that out. Um, so for my Mac, I use the Linux version. And on Linux, if you're using Linux, usually Linux users are a bit more technically adept than the average Windows user. And hopefully you're comfortable with doing stuff on the command line. Um, if not, you're going to have to get comfortable, but you can use, uh, I think it's called app type and get to get the Linux SDL. You're going to have to Google for that though. And what I did on my Mac was I installed something called Mac ports. So Mac ports. And, um, then I use that to get lib SDL two. Very important. You get SDL two and that downloaded SDL two for me the SDL2 development libraries and um, compiled them for me. So uh, either way, the, the, the end target here is, is that you want to end up with, if you're on Windows, you're going to need a SDL.lib or SDL2.lib, it's probably going to be called. And um, you're going to need SDL2.dll probably as well. On um, Unix or Linux, you're going to need the st static uh, lib, lib, probably sdl2.a or something like that. And uh, you're also, to distribute your program, you're also going to need um, lib sdl2.so, probably. On the Mac, um, if, you, if you're using a Mac, instead of lib xyz.so, you're probably going to have xyz.dilib but it's the same thing as this .so and as the um, .dll basically, they're, they're all the same thing. So um, try, try to get that source code, that's the next step. You need to acquire these files, you need to have the header files, the, the static library to link with and the dynamic library as well, which you'll need to distribute your program and for that matter to run it yourself, I suppose. Now I've done that on the Mac, as I described, I used Mac ports to download libsdl2. And what I ended up with was this, and of course this, this is not going to be the same on Windows um, as I just described, but if I go to cd slash user slash, um, uh, trying to remember here, let's have a look, uh, yeah, user local slash includes include then I've got this SDL2 folder and if we look in there here are all my SDL header files so you need all of these whatever platform you're working on and then if I go to slash user slash local slash lib of course this is only relevant for Linux type systems and I go yeah and here we've actually got I've actually got lib SDL2 dot a that's my static um, library, which would be called uh, probably sdl2.lib on Windows. And here's my dynamic library, which I need to distribute with my program, libsdl2.dilib. If we just take a quick look at the Windows one, um, because a lot of people use Windows, of course, and um, uh, it will reassure you to see that, it is, is, as I say, let's take a look, for example, at the 
and Minji W1 here. I'll just unzip this download that I downloaded from the SDL page. You can see you've got an include directory here, and, and you need to you need to copy um, this folder just to somewhere where you can access it. Uh, so if you have a folder that you normally put your uh, programs in or whatever, you can put it there. It doesn't matter too much as long as it's somewhere you can find it. And we've got this lib folder here. Um, we've got a target for like 64-bit machines and also for 36, uh, for sorry, for 32-bit machines. The reason it's called x86 is because, of course, um, early computers were called, you know, like 286, 386, 486, and so on. And um, they were 32-bit machines. Um, but this, so this is actually 32-bit in spite of being called 86, and this is 64-bit. If we look in either of those folders, again, we've got the DLL file. That's the dynamic library. We've got the static library.lib. And um, we've also got the, the header files here. So uh, once you've got those, you can proceed to the next step, which actually, come to think of it, I'll, I'll put in the next video because you're going to want a bit of time to acquire these libraries, download them and check that you, you've got the, in, everything you need, the header files and the two kinds of library, especially if you're using Linux or Mac, because then you've got to probably download them and compile them. And you need to follow just Google for instructions, basically. If you go to Google and search for stuff like, um, you know, compile SDL Linux, that sort of thing, then um, you'll find various instructions on there. And I appreciate that it's easy to get overwhelmed with Google results, but this is, a, this is really a vital skill to learn because if you're going to be doing C++, you are going to find yourself wanting to use Google a lot to figure out problems that you've encountered um, because usually other people will have encountered the same problem. So Google is a really good thing to start getting into. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll actually use the stuff I've downloaded uh, to create finally a basic SDL program, which won't do anything yet, but we'll check that we can actually get a program running. So until next time, happy coding. <laughs>